Hey there, sports history fan. This is Ross Bliley, the host of the Pigskin Tales podcast. Are you looking for that perfect, unique gift for your sports-loving child or grandchild? Or maybe you're looking for one. Well, I got something very unique for you. It's a racket. It's the ultimate device for the ultimate fan. It's perfect for any time you need to make some noise. What it is, is a 7-inch compact megaphone. It's got 8 powerful adjustable LED lights, noisemakers. Plus, you can design it all you want to match your team's colors. So get on out there and let's get loud. Bring a racket to your next game or competition to cheer on your favorite team or athlete. To pick up your racket today, head to MyRacket.com. That's my r a k i t dot com. Welcome, executives, to the Sports Film Pitch, part of the Sports History Network, where we tell Hollywood's next sports story. Today, we're looking into a Christmas boxing movie musical. I know that's a lot into one movie, but it's a great story, sad story, unfortunately, but lends itself to some creative music that we all love, the holiday classics. So let's get into Last Christmas, the Bill Missed Story. Last Christmas, the Billy Misk Story. Now the story is set in the 1920s, so we're going in a blast of the past. And in doing that, my research, there's not a lot of photos, obviously not videos, of back then. The only photos we have are promotional photos of Billy. So we're also going to cast his wife Marie and his promoter Jack Reddy. So, I mean, who are we going to cast for Billy? The casting has kind of shaped the narrative that we're going to do for this pitch. And the person that I thought looked most like him, because Billy has this very chiseled jaw, and he really kind of grabs you with his kind of demeanor. As in, he's very strong looking. He's not ripped like we think of boxers today. But the guy we're going to cast is ripped, so it'll work. And the guy we're going to cast is Zac Efron. Obviously, we know him from High School Musical, The Greatest Showman, most recently in Firestarter, has his show on Netflix. He's got so much things going on. And he's buff. We've seen that in Baywatch as well. He's got a very strong physique. Haven't seen him box, but he at least could play basketball in High School Musical. So he's got a little bit of athleticness about him that can work as well. And boxing was done a little bit differently back then. We're going to have to kind of adjust how boxing was done then to now and really shoot it in a more gritty way. But it's very exciting. And because we cast him, he's really known for being in musicals, even though he hasn't done a whole lot of musicals since High School Musical, just The Greatest Showman. But he really does give out that musical vibe. And in doing this, it's a Christmas time movie, kind of a Christmas story movie. It was hard for me not to just think of a musical. And so we're going to make this a musical. And because of that is who we cast as Marie and Jack, because they need to be musical as well to be in this musical. And Marie, no pictures, no nothing. We have no idea what she looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with Anna Kendrick. Because when you think of music and actress in the same breath, right now, it's hard to go anywhere else. We know Anna from the Pitch Perfect movies. She's also in another Christmas movie, Noel, where she does a little bit of singing as well. And she's kind of grown to more of a dramatic actress as some of her more recent roles. And I think this would kind of mesh both because it's going to be a drama and a musical less comedy in it and less fun it's it's not as depressing as Les Mis and we'll get to that as well but it is kind of a sad story so 
she's gonna play Marie Misk, and to play the promoter Jack Reddy, we're gonna go back to one of Zac Efron's co-stars in another musical, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, as we know from the Wolverine movies, and in The Greatest Showman and Les Mis, can sing as well, and he's won Tonys, hosted the Tonys done a lot of Broadway he's very musically inclined and seems to really pop when he does those musicals because he's just so invested in them and I think that could really work well for this and he's been in a kind of boxing movie before in Real Steel he played a boxer that controlled a boxing robot because you know that's realistic and so he has those chops and we're gonna make his role not only promoter but also trainer of Billy because I think that would allow him to more screen time and be around the movie more and kind of that strong role as we look at other boxing movies the trainer is very strong like Mickey from the Rocky movies and Rocky in the Creed movies the trainer is a very vital part of the movie for boxing so we're gonna take all these characters and make a musical that can have some levity to the tough story the tough time and it's a, an incredible story and sad story but it's like we'll get into the pitch it's gonna leave you a little uneasy at the end and i'm sorry for that but it's just a it's a heartwarming and heart-wrenching tale at the same time so let's get into last christmas the bill misk story last christmas the Billy Misk story. So we're going to open the movie. Billy's going to be about 18. That's when he started his professional fighting. And we're going to show him meeting Jack Reddy at a gym in Minneapolis. Or, sorry, not in Minneapolis. In St. Paul. They are the sister cities. So he meets him in St. Paul at a, a boxing rink. And obviously, Billy is Zach Efron's character. Goes up and talks with Jack Reddy who is Hugh Jackman. And he's, he's there asking him, will he train him, will he promote him? And in real life, Jack is not a trainer, but we're going to add him as the trainer into this because back then, you had less people doing things around boxing. It was more about getting out there and fighting as much as you can. And as you'll see, he fights a lot because he can't help but fight. So Jax sees some things in him and he really wants to get him in the ring and get him going because he's got a lot of promise. And he's he's a guy that just will not be knocked down and will continue to fight no matter what. Just that never give up attitude and he loves that. So he's going to take him on and we're going to show them start to train. And this is when the first song comes in for the musical. And of course... It's not a Christmas song, but we're going to go with Steve walks down. Steve walks barely down the street. Was brim on, pull down low. Steve walks barely down the street with his brim pulled way down low. Ain't no sound but the sound of his feet. Machine guns ready to go. Are you ready? Ha! Are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Out of the doorway, the bullets rip to the sound of the beat. Oh! Boom. And another one bites dust. Du, du, du. And another one bites dust. And another one gone. And another one gone. Another one bites dust. Hey! I'm gonna get you too. Another one bites dust. Hey, hey, hey! So during that song, we're gonna have a montage of him just going through fighters. Boom and boom and boom. And just going through fighters. And in this montage, also, he's gonna find Marie, who's played by Anna Kendrick, and they're gonna get married. and just this whole montage setting up the movie really is what it's going to be doing he's a prolific boxer and we're going to end the montage of him getting knocked out by jack dempsey miss was a good fighter and it fought against a lot of champion or a couple of champions as well jack was the most popular champion he lost to and he faced him three different times but we're going to show him losing to him he never beat jack dempsey and jack is known as one of the greatest fighters of all time and Billy was a great fighter. Withstood 10 rounds with Jack multiple times. 
but we're going to show him getting beat by him. And this is when the story kind of goes into the Christmas story. We're setting up the holiday, we're setting up the boxing and everything that goes around it and his story and his family. And he's got Marie and three kids. And at this point, he's about 24 years old. And at this point where he where he's getting knocked out, but we're going to show him buying a car lot. And this is great. He's having success in bo boxing and going to something to have a career after boxing, which is something very hard for most athletes to go into having a career after. But the problem is, we're going to show him just struggling doing this. Great when he's in the ring, but when he comes to business, he's terrible because he's actually a nice guy, which is something you don't see a lot in boxers or fighters. They're usually very, not mean, but they're not pushovers because they can beat you up. And he was just so nice giving deals to his friends or saying, oh, you can pay me later and never getting paid and just getting behind the eight ball and behind the eight ball. And, you know, he, we show him going to the bank and they say, you owe us $100,000 or we're going to take everything from you. $100,000 back in 1920 is a roughly $1.7 million today. Can you imagine being that much in debt? That's crazy. So we show him just have a renewed interest in he's got to figure out a way, no matter what, to make this money. Now, he makes roughly two to $5,000 a fight, depending on if he wins and who he's fighting. And that can equate to today's money between like ten and $30,000. That can go a, lot, a long way in paying down his debt. So he's paying down his debt. But he's noticing after these last couple fights, he's struggling at the end. He doesn't have that same feeling at the end. He's more tired. He's more in pain, sore. And so he goes to the doctor and I tell him he's got something called Bright's disease. And what this is, is an inflammation in the kidney. It causes the kidney basically to not work anymore and can kill you. Back then, they didn't have dialysis or anything like that to help with these kinds of things. And even today, it can be a death sentence, depending on what type of one you had. We don't know which one he actually had. It um, Back then, the records weren't perfect, and the fact that they even were able to diagnose is actually impressive. But he he's a guy that we'll show kind of throughout the movie loves Christmas, loves that time of year. And he finds this out kind of show him hearing this from the doctor and the doctor kind of fades out in his voice he's just kind of sitting there it's kind of a spotlight on him and we hear him start to sing I'm dreaming of a Christmas just like the ones I Where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. As I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card. May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmases be white The reason he's singing the song is because the doctor told him You may not make it till Christmas In actuality he had about five years, the doctor told him. And he used those five years to help pay off his debts. But in the movie, we're going to kind of shorten that timeline a little bit to kind of show more meaning and like how... I don't know, five years is a lot to tell in a movie. And so we're going to shorten down to a year. The doctor suggests he retire and stop fighting. And he he kind of takes that. He, he slows down. He, he was fighting 
about two times a week, and now he's down to doing about every other week or once a month. He finds this out at the beginning of the year, and we kind of just show him deteriorating a little bit with his family, and he tries to go train every now and then, but he just can't, and so he, he becomes a ghost at the gym. And so Jack hasn't seen him in a while. So he comes over to visit Billy, and really is amazed by what he sees. In awe, this strong fighter that he knew is just a stick of a man. Barely anything there. And Marie's kind of in denial. She just thinks he's sick. The flu, a bad cold, mono, something like that. She doesn't think he's actually dying. Because Billy doesn't want to tell her that. He can't bring himself to tell his wife, his family, that he's dying. That he won't be there anymore. He, he op- Billy opens up to Jack. And tells him, I got no money left. I had to pay everything off to the bank. I got no money for Christmas. Can you book me a fight so I can give my family one last Christmas? And Jack says, I don't know how to say this, but if you get in a ring right now, the way you look, you just might get killed. And he's like, what's the difference if I die in the ring or I die in a rocking chair on the porch? At least this way, I can give my family the Christmas they deserve. One last good memory of me. Or if I die in the ring, they remember me as the fighter I always wanted to be. Jack thinks about it for a little bit. Says, Dude, can you at least start coming to the gym and getting into a condition that I, I can feel positive about getting you a fight? Billy's like, no, I can't do that. You look at me. Any energy I have, I need to save for this fight. No training or conditioning I do is going to help me. In fact, it might kill me before I even get to the fight. I'm not doing that. Jack sighs and says, Okay, I'll see what I can do. And he's able to arrange a fight. In reality, it's the beginning of November when he gets the fight set up. But we're going to push it back to the week before Christmas just to make it more exciting, right? You're going to be fighting Bill for an and true to, true to his word, Billy did not step foot in the gym. Showed up for the fight, looking just as he did. A stick of a man. It looked like he could barely get in the ring. What happened in this fight was amazing. But before the fight actually happens, we're going to show Billy singing, Have yourself a merry Little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all your troubles will be out of sight. Once again. As in olden days, happy golden days of your faithful friends. Rangers, gather near to us once. So he's singing that to his family. Jack is he's about to go into the room. And amazingly, even though the fighter he's facing has fake Jack Dempsey, he sort of didn't win, but held his own, just as Billy, Billy had done years before. So they would be on par with each other. An equal fight. And Bill is in no condition to fight. He puts his heart everything he's got. He never gives up. And true to form, even getting hit. It's not like this guy was told about the situation. He didn't just lay down for him. He, he punched him so hard. Billy fell down. When he got up, back up, there was a purple welt sticking out of his chest. Like a softball sticking out of his chest. And he didn't give up. He came out in that fourth round and threw 
everything he had and he attacked him until he went down. down the stairs Christmas morning to a huge Christmas tree decorated to the nines, toy trains, grand pianos, presents stacked higher than they could even reach. They had food like a buffet on the table, eating like Rockefellers and kings and queens. They sang and laughed all day. These kids had the best Christmas that he could have ever thought to give them. And Billy was smiling the whole time. The next morning, Billy calls Jack. Which I know in reality, he probably not call Jack. We're going to probably change this to... He tells Marie. Because she's actually there. He, he tells them, come and get me. I'm dying. They take him to St. Marie's Hospital. The doctors can't do anything but make him comfortable. He's going to... And we're going to show him passing away New Year's Day. And we're going to hear Jack and Marie sing to it. Where are you, Christmas? Why can't I find? Why have you gone away? Where is the left? singing to them as they're huddled consoling each other So, executives, what do you think? Do you think that would be a great movie? That's something you would want to watch? Would you cast someone different? Would you not make it a musical? Let us know on all the socials. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at Sports Film Pitch. Or drop us a line at SportsFilmPitch.com. You can leave us a voicemail, write us an email, or a review or a comment just on there. And also let us know of future topics you want to hear about. One that you would like to be, one you think that would be great for a movie. 
one thing that's hard to find is local high school stories because they don't make the natural news as much so it's hard for me being one man show over here to be able to find those episodes so if you have one please let us know i would love to hear about it and stay tuned because soon we'll have another sports film pitch hey there sports history fan this is arnie chapman aka the football history dude and i hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the sports history network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website, seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.